All right, everybody, phones down, glasses topped <laughs> up. No, it's not water. Linda and I are both drinking nudes. This is weird. You're not drinking wine. I'm just, you know, switching it up. You're testing the waters, I as am. it were. But it's people are like, good. is it wine? Is it water? What is it? It's a nude. It's a nude lemonade. Mm -hmm. BC Company. Yeah, it's not bad. It's good. You, know, you could be our sponsor. <laughs> hey, there's that. Uh, the chips are, you've just done some chip maintenance. I You're was taking fluffing. Care, taking mm. care of things. Shout out to Handsome Brad who stayed home because he's sick. Oh, I hope you're feeling better. You gotta stay home when you're sick, guys. Yeah. That's a thing, that's a thing. Okay. We well, have so many things to talk about and we have some subjects that are kinda gonna get you going, oh. uh, One of the things we're gonna be talking about is outrage culture mm -hmm. on the show. Have you noticed that everybody seems to be so offended by the smallest thing and then bigger things? So there's a BC Mountie who's kind of under fire right now because he put up this website mocking it's the prime minister. It's crazy. Yeah, we're going to talk about that Prince Harry. We got lots to get to. Let's just first say what we're going to we're going to do on the show um with our guest. Let's start with our guest. Okay. Okay. Guy Felicella is coming in. This is a hot topic that we actually started talking with uh, Dr. Julian Summers a couple of episodes ago mm -hmm. cuz we're trying to tackle what the what's the equation? What is the formula that is going to help with the homeless addiction uh, cyclical nature of we've been talking about this for every episode since we've been on the air. Yeah, the premier actually said at one point uh, late in the new year uh, last year that maybe there should be forced rehab and some people just freaked out. And then if not that what? Well, our guest who is someone who is a, it's lucky to be alive because Guy Felicella was a hardcore heroin user for 20 years, almost died six times has managed to turn his life around and now he is educating others. He's working for the BC Center for Substance Abuse. He is t talking to kids and he has an idea. Maybe you should incentivize drug users who are in rehab facilities to stay clean by paying them a stipend. And the reasons around this are unbelievable. You could stay tuned because he's going to join us in studio. It's mm -hmm. huge. Another topic we're going to hit that has a lot of people talking and a lot of people doling out the cash to buy the book. <laughs> Spare. Prince Harry's book is out. We're seeing him everywhere now. There's the book. Yeah, you know what? It is the biggest bestseller of a nonfiction book in history. Just bumped Obama's memoir out of there. So he's making a lot of money. A lot of people are saying, you know, Harry, shut up. We're sick of you. But uh, we'll talk about him. We're also going to talk about the Golden Globes. So, yeah. you know, on a kind of entertainment vibe, oh my goodness, if you had small children in the room and you were watching the Globes, there was a lot of uh, profanity. And I'm wondering, is this the new thing? TV in 2023, you can let her fly? It was a little shocking, and mm. I'm not a pearl clutcher when it comes to that. <laughs> and our guest who's going to chime in on this, Dana G, you know her, you love her, Dana G, province, sun, columnist, mm. entertainment reporter, all around amazing broad. She'd love that I call her a broad. She's a broadcaster with yeah. us. So she's going to chime in on the F-bombs on regular old cable TV. And since we're talking about the celebrity thing, there is a connection to BC in terms of a new drug that the province is just making more accessible to British Columbians who have type 2 diabetes. It's called Ozempic. And you might have heard about this drug recently because a bunch of influencers in Hollywood have started using Ozempic as a weight loss drug. So now that the province is making it more available for diabetes, in BC, it's hard to find because a bunch of Americans are cross-border shopping coming to BC to get Ozempic. It's a it's a tough one that one, Linda. Mm -hmm. I mean, you first told me about this. I hadn't even heard of it. I hadn't seen the influencers talking about it. I only know the word Ozempic because I hear the commercials on U.S. cable. Yeah. Be because it is for type two diabetes. It's great that mm -hmm. the government is is creating uh, the af affordability piece right. for those who are, are struggling with type two diabetes. But then you say about the cross border shopping, snapping it all up. That's a tough one. But I'd be a little pot kettle black if I wasn't saying, well, I've actually gone south of the border to buy things that you can't get yeah, here. Yeah, I guess so, there. but like, if we're talking about children's Tylenol, no, that's get different you. than a weight loss drug. Uh, but I, I totally get what you're saying, but it's one of those yeah. things where I had to give myself pause. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, what, what can we do to make sure that that wasn't happening? Is there a way right. to show your medical card in order to purchase it? Or I don't know, I don't know, what the, what's the answer? So chime in on that, mm -hmm. give us, chime in on our conversation. You know what I'm saying? That's our good opportunity to say, that's our right. Twitter, that's our 
We, <laughs> we also had a guest on the show late last year who is the head of the paramedics union. Yes. They were so concerned because there were really long wait times for people who were desperately in need of a paramedic to get to their door quickly. Well, guess what? They have struck a tentative deal. I'm going upstairs Woo! on that one, Linda. Way to oh, go. Troy Clifford and the team of people who take care of us day in and day out, the paramedics, the ambulance They deserve drivers. it. They do. Yeah, they it's a tough job, and they, they're underpaid about 30% compared to firefighters and police officers. You've been on this story. Yeah, we don't know what the deal is yet because they can't reveal it until they let the members know, which makes a lot of sense. But I kind of like the teacher's deal, good though. Good for them. If they're happy and they feel supported and they can deliver the service that we count on, because we do yeah. count on that. And over these last couple of years, I can't imagine the strain of a tainted drug supply, oh. a pandemic, plus, you know, all the other pieces yeah. of the puzzle, true frontline workers. I Weather mean, events. this to the paramedics. Yeah, exactly. Now, I know you're a big cook. I am not. But I know that people like Jody, not you specifically, who like to cook with gas because if I'm you're one of those people. a chef uh, and the commercial kitchens all cook with gas, well, guess what? There's been a lot of chatter this week about the fact that there are studies showing a potential link between using a gas stove in your home and an increased risk in getting asthma yeah. with your children because the gas stoves are emitting some poisonous uh, toxins and what have you into the atmosphere. So a BC doctor I saw on Twitter yep. tweeted this out. She's saying, hey, how much more do we need? How much more evidence do we need before we say, hey, it's time to get gas out of uh, buildings in BC? But I know a bunch of chefs and cooks would be going like, don't you dare take away my gas stove. In fact, Brittle Star yeah. uh, is a Canadian a comedian, a commentator. I love. Uh, he riffed on it today. Patriots, this is how it starts. First, they come for our gas stoves. Then, probably our bread makers. But good luck. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... <laughs> There's not really, there's some controversy about this uh, study with people saying, you know what, it, with proper ventilation and with, you know, hoods over the range yeah. and what have you, you can mitigate any potential issues <gasps> with the toxic gases that are being released. But I don't think we're going to see government come in and say, excuse me, ma'am, I'm taking away your gas stove. I'd have to take my air fryer first. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to keep my gas stove. And I agree that the ventilation is important. I agree with the studies that are being had. I think there should be warnings about this. But I think they're also, I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. <laughs> but... There are many environmental concerns when it comes to what may or may not cause an issue for yeah, that's true. anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to be mindful about it. In fact, just recently, I had an issue with my gas stove. Mm -hmm. And the igniter had gone. And I have one of those noses that I can smell everything, right? right. Brian's like, I don't smell anything. I'm like, there's some, the, the yeah. burner's on. Yeah. And it's not lit. And I'm always right. Mm -hmm. Go figure. So, yes, we need to be mindful. Yes, we need to look out for such things. And I think... We are all learning the importance of proper ventilation in so many ways. Well, yeah, because of COVID. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, we did talk last week about a whole bunch of aviation news in regards to... I'm so worried about your travel. <laughs> I know. Go on in February. Um, passengers coming in from China having to show a negative COVID test. Right. And people saying, well, isn't that xenophobic? Well, check out this tweet. Uh, this is interesting because Douglas Todd works with the Vancouver Sun. Yeah. He's saying a UBC prof told him that when their family members just flew back to China, they had to show a negative COVID test. So it's not racist if no. you have to show one which had, you know, whichever direction you're going in. Right. And that was what we were presenting last week in talking to Sunny Wong and Ben Liu. Mm -hmm. And the fact that if you or I were in China and flying here, we would have to right. show a negative COVID test. So jumping to the conclusion that it's racist, it's just if it gets louder and in that sort of wedge part of the society that is looking for a reason to be racist out loud, which I hope most people are not. Right. Like uh, I hope. The other thing that's interesting, though, is you saw the cluster. We were talking to Duncan D last week, yeah. who's the former COO of Air Canada, about the holiday chaos at the airports with, you know, flights chaos. canceled all over the, the place. bags, thousands of bags. Right? Well, so our transport minister has been under fire because people said he didn't do enough. So uh, today, a whole bunch of airline executives, airport executives were on the hot seat uh, at Parliament Hill today, having to testify before a transport committee looking for answers. And our transport minister is hinting that something is coming because right now the onus is on you, the passenger, to prove 
why your flight was disrupted and why you deserve compensation. No, it should be the airline. There should be more uh, onus on them. It should be as automatic as an NSF check. Exactly. If you, you know how the bank dings you if it's a penny different? Yeah, it should be like that, and it should be on the airlines to compensate you. If mm -hmm. you did not get to your destination, there should be various levels. If you were late, how long were you late? It costs more for over this amount. If you got delayed to the later that day, the yep. next day, if it was outright canceled, if you're stranded somewhere, not just paying for your bills, but more. Two real quick things. By yes. the way, brownies are no longer called brownies I because like racialized girls said they didn't feel comfortable. This is the new name. They're called Embers. Embers. And here's another thing. Uh, Nike, the big shoe company, has done an homage to Montreal and bagels. It's got a bagel shoe. Hot a shoe. Which everybody sold out. Love everybody it. loves it. So they're Ugly as it gets and so cool at the yeah. same time. Mm -hmm. Ugly works. Hey, you want to know uh, in... You guys stay tuned for what the hell's wrong with people, obviously, but there's also a happy ending here. If this one's kind of both, look at this picture. Look at this face. Oh, so cute. Yeah, that's Golden Girl, Gigi. Uh, she is the focus of a cruelty investigation, but there is something good coming out of this, so stay yeah. tuned for that. Yeah. And still ahead on Steel and Vance, are you in favor of cannabis consumption sites in BC? Mm. You know, you go to a cocktail lounge, maybe a cannabis lounge, and a so-called drugstore that sells illegal drugs like heroin may be coming to Vancouver. We're going to tell you more next.